In the basis of success, the fourth one, the one related to discernment, Wimang Sa, is a hard one to translate in English. In John Lee's favorite translation in Thai, Kwam Rob Cobb, means circumspection. Looking around, looking at things from all sides. That is one of the features of discernment, is that it does look at things from all sides. And John Mahabua talks about a John Mun. Now, when a John Mun would see that a John Mahabu was getting a little bit too narrow in his focus. He was very proud of the fact that he was holding to the different ascetic practices when the monks around him were not. And a John Mun saw that holding to the practice was a good thing, but being proud about it was not a good thing. So he had his ways of taking a John Mahabua down a little notch. At first, the John Mahabua was upset about it, but again, after all, this was his teacher. So he thought about it and realized that John Mun wasn't seeing things that a John Mahabua was not seeing. Because he was looking at things from all sides. And how to develop that quality? We have to develop it in your everyday activities. There's another passage where John Lee says, when you're living in a monastery, you have to make your eyes as big as the monastery. In other words, you have to see what's going on. Each of us has his or her duties that we've taken on. And sometimes we get narrowly focused on them. And things that should be looked at don't get looked at. Places that should be cleaned don't get cleaned. Places that should be straightened out don't get straightened out. And you might say, well, it's no big deal. But there's many reasons why it is a, is a big deal to keep things really clean and make sure that everything is tidy. Think about the people going to see a John Mun out in the forest. And everyone reports the same thing, that they were amazed at how clean the area was around his hut, around his walking path. If there was a little sala, everything was very neat, even though it was very crudely put together. There's a story that John Louis was trying to get some people from the Northeast to invite a John Mun back to the Northeast after he'd been on the northern part of Thailand for many years. He told them, okay, build a hut for a John Mun, but don't plane the wood. Don't make it too neat. In other words, she liked things kind of rough and natural put together, but everything was really, really clean. And it's inspiring. The same when we have nice buildings like we have here. There are a lot of people who put a lot of generosity into making these a reality. And they like to see that the people staying here take care of them. So when your chores are done for the day, look around see what else needs to be done. This is supposed to be one of the characteristics of, of Venerable Sariputta. It's a story that comes in the commentary, but it's still it's worth taking to heart. The tradition is that in those days, if the first monks who were going to go out for the alms round, those who were there would come into the dining hall, set it up, and then leave. And then the ones who came later or returned later, those who finished the meal after the others, they were the ones who cleaned up. But with Sariputta, he would inevitably, even though he was not the last to finish eating, he would always stay around just to check and make sure that everything was taken care of. Then he would go back to his hut to meditate. The characteristic of someone with some wisdom. Because after all, looking at things, making sure everything is straightened out from all sides, that's what you've got to do with your mind. All too often we get in these vicious cycles. And 
and we can't get out because we can't see another way of looking at things. Everything becomes very narrow. This is going to be that way, that's going to be this way. We get addicted to certain ways of thinking. And it just becomes a spiral around and around and around. And if you can't get out, you've got yourself trapped. It's like that story of the, the deer in the forest in the winter. They have their trails through the snow, and as the snow piles up over the course of several months, they stay on the same trails, and they strip the bark off the trees next to the trails. And if the bark gets totally stripped off before the end of the winter, they die, even though there's bark on other trees in the forest, but they don't leave their trails. So you want to look at your mind with that same all-around eye. And you can't sleep because you're tense, and you're tense because you can't sleep. We've got to break the cycle somehow. When you're addicted to a certain way of thinking, you've got to do something to break the cycle. It requires the ability to step back, step out, look around, have that all-around eye. After all, that's one of the features of the Buddha. He said to have an all-around eye, because he saw things from all directions. And he saw dangers coming from all directions, so he was able to deal with them. That's the quality of discernment that we're trying to develop. This is why even the concentration we're practicing is a full body awareness. You get too narrowly focused on your one spot, then there are a lot of things in the mind that get hidden. And what you see in that one spot may be very clear, but there are a lot of other things connected to it that get hidden. As with any spotlight. Everything right next to the spotlight gets thrown into the dark. You want to create a more diffuse light inside. It radiates in all directions and sees in all directions. That's how you develop your discernment. So it starts with little things. As you go through the day, look around you. Try to get a pretty good idea of what other people's chores are. And there are some days when someone, for one reason or another, hasn't done his or her chore. But you can fill up the gap. It doesn't take that much extra. And it's developing a good habit, a habit that carries all the way through. 